G'day guys, Andy Adding here. Just want to talk about session seven, which is happening Thursday night on the Gold Coast or uh, Saturdays in Brisbane. Uh, it's a pretty simple session, but let's get straight into it. Um, we're on uh, warm up routine B, which we've done largely before, but there are a couple of little things in there that might be a little bit different. The dynamic lower body stuff includes a little bit of static stretching um, and some stuff that you might not have seen before. So make sure you run your eyes across that um, first, just to make sure that you, you understand those exercises. It's pretty straightforward stuff. The rest I think we've done in a routine before. Um, uh, the base running uh, now actually moves after the warm up to during the BP one of the rotations in the in the BP stations. So um, that's changed a bit, a little bit there. Then they go to the throwing program again. Let's make sure everybody does the bands before they go out and throw. Um, the juniors are doing the rhythm and timing drills. The seniors are doing um, the Jaeger program. But let's try and make sure that. Um, everybody gets an opportunity to go through these rhythm and timing drills. So even though they're doing the Jaeger program, make sure you go through these drills with everyone um, and have them go through them. So again, the, uh, it's just that little sequence of tap and goes, jump backs, that sort of stuff. Um, if you're not um, across all of those uh, exercises, again, I think I put a link in the, the last one to uh, the throwing drills that are online. Um, at our YouTube page, so go and check those out to refresh your memory, but they're pretty straightforward. Um, but as they, uh, the senior guys stretch back, they could be doing those on their own pace, just make sure that they go through those at various stages so that they still don't completely forget those drills from last year. They need to be doing those as well. Um, after the throwing program, we go straight into in and out um, for, for, for everyone again. Um, we need to continue to challenge them. At the end of the infield outfield routine, though, after the outfielders have taken fly balls while the, the infielders have finished the infield section of them, for that last little bit, you might want to then tell the outfielders to go back out into positions and rather than just hitting a pop-up for the catcher, try and hit pop-ups to everyone. So um, hopefully whoever you've got is pretty good on the fungo, but ideally you would just leave all the guys out in position and hit fungos and basically each person in the group needs to catch one before that they can come off. Um, so basically, you know, where you've got a situation where some kids will be a bit timid and kind of hide from the ball and stuff as the more confident players, you know, call for the ball and call everybody off and go catch the balls, then they come off, get ready for the next part of the session. Um, and that leaves out there the, the other kids who still haven't caught a pop-up yet. So make sure you try and get a pop-up for everybody, please, before they come off um, to build their confidence in that area. Um, once we get to individual D, it's pretty straightforward. Again, maybe the only one that's not is the infielders. The infielders are going to introduce the bobbled ball, so they are going to reinforce the routine ground ball, but at some point during that session, we need to emphasize um, fielding the bobbled ball, so when they knock it down about obviously not making two mistakes on one play, not just knocking it down and throwing off balance, all that sort of stuff, get their head over the ball, pick up the ball with their bare hand, pick up their target, reassess the situation and make a play if they have one, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, so we need to address that uh, to a certain extent, um, but they will get some practice just reinforcing routine ground balls. Um, the bullpens, we're throwing bullpens again, so obviously check at the start of the session to make sure we work out who needs to throw bullpens. Um, if you have got a lot, obviously again, that means you're going to have to start those bullpens earlier. So you could potentially start them as early as um, as soon as the throwing program's done, steal a catcher from the infield outfield um, and get them involved. One of the things we've already identified is that all of the sessions actually are quite short on catches, so we need to identify other guys, maybe that's not their primary position but are happy to at least do a little bit of catching in the bullpen. And think about from your clubs or uh, your regional programs who maybe some other guys in. We might even be able to invite in another couple of catchers just for the sake of giving us some extra bodies um, that can catch in the bullpen. So even if they haven't paid to be involved in the program, but specifically inviting them for the sake of having some more guys that can help us in that area because we are a bit short. Um, uh, make sure in the bullpens that they're throwing bullpen assessments, so that 24 pitch uh, assessment and record it on the assessment chart. Um, make sure that you you keep those charts. I'll collect them at the end and, and hopefully um, chart all of them so we can see their progress. But you need to make sure that their name and the date is on those charts. So please make sure that you fill those in appropriately. The hitting session, 
Um, we're gonna go to live BP for this one, so obviously you'll need to make sure you have enough BP throwers. Um, so let me know how you go with that, but there's a pretty simple BP routine um, on the back of the session plan, uh, which is pretty straightforward. Um, again, depending on how many hitters you've got and how much time you've, um, you've got, you might wanna include the conditioning, which in this case is a flexibility session, um, as one of the rotations for your hitting, which is uh, live hitting, base running, shagging, um, and potentially if you've got a lot of hitters and you need that extra time to get through, then you can include that conditioning, that flexibility session as part of that. Um, if you don't have enough BP throwers, then you may have to modify that. If you have access to a machine, that would be good. Um, you can use the machine instead of a BP thrower. Um, if you don't have that, then I'm okay to go back to potentially uh, front side flip, which is uh, less stress for the one person, for instance, to throw the whole session, uh, but not necessarily ideal. So you may even be able to get some of the older kids to throw BP from behind the screen if you don't have enough bodies um, to, to throw. But uh, let me know how you're going with that. If we need to try and rustle up some more help, we'll, uh, we'll do that. So anyway, that's all. If you have any issues or questions, give me a buzz. Otherwise, we'll see you out there. Thanks.